why are we adding these extra steps to the accounts payable process if they just create more work without boosting productivity? This is a question I am asked repeatedly about certain recommended practices that seem to fly in the face of reason, at least for those who don't fully understand all the implications of the accounts payable process in question. Why do people ask me this question? For over 20 years, I've immersed myself in accounts payable issues, talking to experts in related fields, reading about accounts payable, writing about accounts payable, talking about accounts payable, and now making videos about accounts payable. In the last eight months, over 30,000 professionals have taken my beginner accounts payable course. But enough about me. Let's get to the questions and more importantly, the answers. Make sure you stick around until the end when we address the issue that has stumped many small and even mid-sized companies. Why do the three-way match if the, if the invoice has already been approved for payment. There are many reasons. Let me ask you a few questions and I'm sure by the time I finish asking you the questions you'll understand why I make such a big deal about the three-way match and it is so important that every organization do it. Number one, does the approvers in your company check the details on the invoice, i.e. is the price correct, the quantity, what was ordered, and more important, did they charge you for expenses that they were supposed to cover, like freight or insurance? In most, in, in most cases, the answer to this question is going to be no. Our approvers don't do a detailed review of the invoices. Next, I'm going to ask you, did the approver check to make sure this invoice wasn't already paid and this isn't a duplicate copy of the invoice? This has become a huge problem in many organizations as about 25% of all invoices that are received are actually duplicate copies. Next, let me ask you, did the approver check to see that the payment terms are correct and the supplier isn't trying to get you pay to pay earlier? Again, in most cases, the answer to that will be no. And by the way, did you ever notice that no one ever tries to get you to pay later than expected? They're always trying to get you to pay quicker. Next, let me ask you, do, you, do your approvers make sure that everything on the invoice was received and that none of the goods that were received were damaged or were different than what was ordered? Again, I expect the answer was no. Lastly, did the approver check to make sure that this is a legitimate invoice? So did they just automatically approve it because it looks legitimate, but in actuality, it may be fraudulent? And the only way you're really going to tell if it's fraudulent is when you go to do the three-way match and you see that there are no goods received and no uh, purchase order was ever issued for this. So hopefully uh, by just thinking through these questions you'll see why yes the three-way match it is a little bit of extra work but it is really important that you do it. Question number two why is it so bad for two employees or for that matter an entire department to share a credit card? Isn't this a lot easier than issuing an individual credit card for each individual employee especially when they only make one or two purchases a month? Let me explain this in the simplest way I can. When you have one card and multiple people using it, there is no audit trail. When a transaction comes through, there is no way to identify who placed the who placed the order, who placed the transaction, were they authorized to do so. And so it makes it much more difficult for whoever is reviewing the bill, assuming that they are going to review it, which you, you definitely should do, uh, to make sure that everything on it is legitimate. Uh, so now, sometimes when I explain this, people will come back and they'll say, well, we don't need to know that information. And maybe you don't need to know it. Maybe it's not important but I suspect that in most cases it is. And not only that, as, as we'll go on, you'll see there's another reason why you absolutely need to know who placed what. So the next thing I'm going to ask you is what happens when a TV is purchased or some other personal item is purchased on the company credit card and when you bring it back to the team, everyone says, not me, I didn't buy that. And again, if you have several people sharing the card, you have no way of knowing. Now, one more thing, um, lack of an audit trail and your employee, employees reeling that there's lack of, realizing that there's lack of an audit trail might embolden a brazen tip, uh, employee to take advantage. So sometimes giving each individual person their own card is kind of a deterrent from them doing anything inappropriate with it because you're going to know right off the bat who it was. Remember, your employees know better than anyone else where the weaknesses are in your process and not giving everyone their own card is definitely a weakness. Now, also, if you have several employees using the same card, you negate your fraud protections with the card issuer. So when you get that TV purchase, for example, you can't go back to the card issuer and say, 
this isn't ours because you don't you know you've had multiple people using it sometimes people will say well we'll just do this once mary jane doesn't really need a card but just this one time we're going to give her uh, uh, joe's card and she can go ahead and use it but then that second employee mary jane has the card number and the other info the expiration date and the three or four digit code and they can use it whenever they wish wait wish be it a week later a month later or actually any time before the card expiration date so bottom line when it comes to sharing cards it's simple don't do it question number three it takes a lot of time and effort to put together an accounts payable policy and procedures manual that's true people will ask is it really necessary and if so why so yes it is necessary because it documents exactly how your processes are supposed to work and your staff can refer to it if they have a question but more than that let me throw this hypothetical situation out to you let's say the people in your accounts payable team chip in and they buy a lottery ticket and it's uh, one of the big prizes and they win and so they win I don't know 800 million dollars and let's say there are eight of them so they each get a hundred million dollars and they all quit you are up a creek without a paddle but if you have a very detailed policy and procedures manual you can still keep the accounts payable function running you can still get uh, your bills processed your bills paid um, it'll be rough I'm not gonna lie to you but you'll still be able to keep going also having this detailed policy and procedures manual can help you when you're audited shows um, especially if you're using best practices and appropriate internal controls that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing question number four why do we need a detailed travel and entertainment policy can't we just rely on our employees to use common sense and in you know probably 75 percent of the cases with 75 percent of your employees the answer to that is yes that would probably work most of the time but the simple answer is no you cannot do that number one every organization has at least a few employees and some have more than a few that are completely lacking in common sense so what you and I would think everybody would know better than to do that these people wouldn't not only that almost every company has the issue of uh, some employees a few employees who think oh the company's paying Paying, the sky's the limit I can get what I want and so they'll think nothing of ordering a $200 bottle of wine with dinner when of course they would never do that under normal circumstance and then you have the issue of what works in one company your policy will not align with what every other company is doing you'll have some of your own little nuances and so you'll have an employee who will do something which you consider to be ridiculous and when you call them on it they'll say oh but at my old company we were allowed to I'm always amazed at the thing that people claim they were allowed to do at their old company but if you've got a, doc a documented policy then you don't have to worry about that question number five some of the best practices you recommend are difficult or cumbersome to implement like verifying those change of bank account emails with suppliers can't we ignore a few of them how will anyone know now the simple answer to this is no you can't ignore any of the, the when this question is asked and the, the mention is of the verification of bank accounts I just point out that you know a company can verify those emails they'll call up a hundred times uh, and a hundred times they'll be told yes that was a legitimate request and then they don't call the hundred and first time and that's the time that it is a fraudulent request and they send money to someone that they shouldn't have and then the money's gone and they can't get it back at the end of the day in accounts payable the job is not only to pay the organization's bills which it definitely is but also to protect the company's assets and and sometimes to protect the company's assets you're not as productive as you might be because you have to spend time implementing certain controls to make sure that you protect the assets so yes some best practices may make you a little less productive than you might have been under other circumstances but would you rather that than having to explain to the CFO and to the company president why two million dollars was sent to the wrong party and you can't get that money back I know I wouldn't want to be in that position before we get to the questions about work of your processes and an automation issue if you're getting value from this talk I'd love it if you would hit the like or the thumbs up button it sends a message that you're getting value from this talk and I should make more like it a personal thanks to everyone who liked this and by the way if you have a question that isn't answered that you would like answered please answer it in the comments and I'll try and get it answered for you question number six it's really a mu it's really much easier for us to have invoice processes 
process is make updates to the master vendor file than to have to send it to a separate person to, to make those changes. Why do you object to invoice processes making that change so much? So right off the bat, let me acknowledge that you were right. It is much easier to have your processes make the change, but, and this is a big but, that completely negates appropriate separation of duties and um, makes it easier for an employee to commit fraud without having collusion required. Let me give you a simple example. Let's say you have somebody who is processing an invoice and they notice that a, an invoice comes through for uh, somebody named, a consultant, let's say that you have, named Mike Johnson and a light goes off in their head and they'd say, ah, Mike Johnson. My brother-in-law's last name is Johnson. So they go into the master vendor file, they change the address on the in the master vendor file to their brother-in-law's address. The check goes through, they continue processing. The check goes through. When the brother-in-law gets the payment, they cash the check, they split the money, and then your processor goes in and changes the address back. Okay, that's a simple example. It can be a little bit more convoluted than that. But again, appropriate separation of duties and part of appropriate separation of duties in the accounts payable space is that you have somebody processing invoices and a different person handling the master vendor file. Question number seven, do you really think that even smaller companies will be impacted by automation and need to learn about it? Automation has become much less expensive and much more user-friendly. Today on the market, there are modules for everyone and companies of all sizes. And some of it, I don't want to use the word cheap, but it's really inexpensive. So yes, I do believe that everybody needs to, to learn about it. Not only that, there are some apps available, not really invoice automation solutions, but others that will help make your accounts payable and accounting job much, much uh, easier to do, much smoother, and that are free. So everybody needs to know how to use them, to learn how to use them. Automation, we have to learn to think of as a friend or as a tool that helps us become more efficient and more effective in our job. That's why we did a short video on how to use Microsoft Copilot, one of those free apps that's around, and there'll be a link to that in the description. To help some even smaller and mid-sized companies get started with AP automation, we've put together a comprehensive introduction, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.